Hi everyone, my name is ZX. Welcome to uh, Filecoin Orbit. Today is, is a celebration of one year of Filecoin. I'm very excited to be here. I work on ecosystem growth and I lead crypto econ that. And the theme of my talk today will be putting uh, Filecoin in hyperdrive, huge increases in storage onboarding. I think we, we talk a lot about, apart from all these like massive, massive, amazing business opportunities on the Filecoin protocol and the Filecoin network, there's also lots of opportunities and potential in storage onboarding thanks to the very recent uh, hyperdrive upgrade. And uh, before we start, just a few uh, disclaimers. Um, this is a research talk mostly based on uh, crypto economics with data from the Falcon blockchain. Data and charts are provided by Sentinel and Starboard. Huge thanks to both teams. Numbers can be wrong, so please do your own research and make your own decisions. And uh, people have different private beliefs and preferences. Dynamics can also be complex in a blockchain network. And last but not least, past action may not be indicated of future behaviors. Without further ado, this is like, um, let's dive right in with a few charts, right? This is like one year of Falcon celebration. I think we have achieved so much as a community and ecosystem in the past one year. I feel very proud to be a part of this community. So Falcon exceeded this exponential baseline that we set at the, at the genesis. So for context, there's this baseline that the network needs to meet and achieve. It starts from 2.5 exabyte of storage at Genesis, and it doubles every year. And so that is the orange line. It's actually exponential. And the Falcon network it, uh, surpassed the, uh, the exponential baseline in April, and it's growing at an increasing rate. And, right, and today, Falcon is the largest decentralized storage network. Um, apart from that, people, the common question always come up is, how reliable is this storage on Filecoin? Well, this is um, this chart is then showing what is the percentage of storage committed ever terminated on Filecoin. Um, as we can see, like when the first first band when network first went live, there were some um, termination events. Given that it's pretty unstable, it's a new network. I think it's understandable. And as more storage are onboarded, um, there's like um, then you can see this percentage termination actually goes down um, to a pretty low level. Although I must point out, this is not exactly a reliability metric because there are many other dimensions to it, depending on the minor uh, search providers as well. There are many teams working on more granular metric, but it seems like fairly um, reasonable. And then there's also massive demand for using the Falcon network, as we can see from the daily uh, base fee uh, snapshot pre hyperdrive, where like this is uh, the same mechanism as. Um, it's a very similar mechanism to Ethereum's ERP-1559. Um, you see like lots of um, spike in the demand, very active network. People are using network to provide storage services and also to consume storage services. Um, and just to recap on some of this concept right, for people who are less familiar, what is gas, what is base fee, and all this stuff. So gas really is a very com it's a common concept in blockchain. It's a measure of computation and storage resources consumed by messages. And then there are a few like, the JSON concept or, uh, or derived concept. One is the gas limit. It applies to both the message and also the block, right? So each message may consume up to this amount of resources, this amount of gas limit. And then for all the blocks, it can consume, it can consume up to this amount of gas as well. So when people say the blockchain is congested, sometimes what it means is that, oh, all the messages are using all the gas limit in the block, right? Um, and then this is, well, gas usage is self-explanatory. This is basically the amount of uh, gas, which is some unit of accounting that a message has used up. And then fee cap, uh, fee cap is basically just a UX thing. This is how much I'm going to spend per message. And then that you don't need to worry about the rest of it. And there'll be a gas premium, which is the priority fee that is paid to the miner uh, for including your message. And then what is this space fee thing? Um, so it's both basically on a high level, it's a poster price mechanism that improves the user experience. So you, think, you can think of it as like, there's a, there's a highway and there's toll on the road, right? Like, and uh, this, this toll is kind of dynamic based on the relative supply and demand of the road itself. It's very congested, the price may go up. If you think, oh, that is too expensive for me, I don't want to take it. Then you like wait for a bit or you get on the bus, right? Like you do some kind of aggregation to like, to reduce the, uh, the, 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 um, the expense. So um, base fee is, um, Base fee is basically this like toll rate on the highway in some sense, right? Like it's spiky when demand is spiky and then it grows exponentially to find this equilibrium quickly and people may back out, right? So um, then the transaction fee here will be the gas usage multiplied by the base. And there's a paper about this um, by Professor Tim Roth Garden. And just a few take a, a, a kind of alignment why this must be burned. 
So like message verification is um, is a cost that is shouldered by the whole network. So every message sender should pay the network in this like uh, kind of a network fee mechanism and not burning it will create some kind of incentive or collusion as described in the paper. And we also want to align the token supply with the network utility because it's manifested in the dem demand for using the network. So as we can see some cumulative chart, right? Like in terms of cumulative network fee, uh, file cloud process 28 million file coin comparing to the rest of Web3 is really among the top as we can see from this um, chart on a uh, token terminal. And then there's also a uh, Filecoin total collateral lock. It's also crossing 120 million Filecoin in just a matter of days. So where does that really put us, right? Um, we are not on the chart yet, but like, well, even Filecoin is not like a DeFi protocol by this traditional total value lock metric, it's also among the top. So very strong macroeconomic statistics. I feel very uh, proud of, what we, uh, of uh, very proud of what we achieved as a community. But strong demand is not all sounding good, right? In economics, it's always a few sides to the coin, right? Like, so it's also, it also means the expense to participate, right? This is very common complaint in the Ethereum world where, oh, it's, it costs us like so expensive to make this transaction. And remember, Filecoin is about utility, right? It's about empowering businesses and making uh, blockchain useful and mainstream. And so huge kudos to the team who actually did this hyperdrive upgrade um, less than eight, about eight months into the network that increased the network throughput, or sometimes people call it the TPS, by 10 to 25x, right? This is this includes research, development, and deployment. So huge, huge um, kudos to the team. Um, and this is done through like um, innovation in the underlying technology. Um, so hyperdrive basically reduces this like unit storage gas usage, right? Like as we can see, you cannot aggregate sector. That's why it's called uh, hyperdrive for each message can contain like more sectors. So you increase the throughput in the um, uh, of the chain through this kind of aggregation of snarks of zero knowledge proof, right? So you can go up to 800 sector aggregation. And there's this very obvious in, uh, reduction in like um, uh, in the gas usage, as we mentioned earlier, the base transaction fee is the gas usage multiplied by the base fee. There are a few carbots here. We don't want to like go down too much into the details. And then there are some other new concepts that were introduced to just like um, to address some of these incentive issues. So two of these are the batch balancer and the batch discounts, right? They produce, provide this kind of balancing dynamic for the base fee based on the network demand. Basically what this is saying is when the network is at capacity, right? Like we incentivize more aggregation to free up more chain throughput. And then you also share the cost reduction of other messages. So such that making deals, we want that to be cheap. Um, so based on the parameter that we recommended the last time, we were expecting this uh, equilibrium base fee to be around 0 0.15 nano fuel. And here's some illustration of like, how this might work. When the base fee is low, the unit economics actually favor just adding single proof that use more gas. Uh, and the base fee catches up to some level, which is what we call the crossover base fee or this, uh, which is this equi uh, equilibrium. Then you start to see this shift in the unit economics, right? It's actually more favorable to aggregate. That will free up more of the chain capacity and then bring the base fee down and makes it cheaper. Um, and in the event that like it becomes so expensive, even though we don't think you will reach this level, um, well, you might, but it's on, it's well, people can always aggregate to free up more capacity because base fee, as we mentioned earlier, it's a result of relative supply and demand of the network. Um, so then when people will, you will aggregate even more and you free up even more chain capacity and further reduces the base. Fee. So let's take a look at some of this um, result of the uh, hyperdrive and see like, how uh, some of the key metrics perform, right? So here is the base fee snapshot, right? As we can see, the daily base fee has come down very significantly with much lower variance, right? Like, and and this is as mentioned in like uh, Professor Ralph Garden's paper, right? Whichever price discovery mechanism we use, it would it does not really adjust like. Um, uh, how high the base fee might be, that is actually uh, that is actually a scalability issue. And this is exactly that, right? Because we introduced, the protocol introduced a 1025X increase in the supply of this capacity, which is quite unheard of in the in the Web3 world, right? Like this kind of like actual scalability improvement that is um, enabled through underlying technological innovation. And I feel very um, excited and I can't wait to see like what other um, you, you guys will hear a lot more about all these new other development that the teams are working on. 
So it, so the direct result of that is it's much, much cheaper to provide storage on Filecoin. This is the chart on the unit sector addition cost. Sector is just a unit of providing storage on Filecoin, right? It was like very spiky and pretty high. And then like with Hyperdrive upgrade becomes way cheaper, much lower variance to provide storage on Filecoin. And then the storage onboarding has almost doubled. This is a very big increase. And then we see like more recently, uh, it's it's coming down a little bit because a lot of storage providers are migrating across borders um, to provide better storage services. So um, this is a um, very good result. And because uh, from the previous chart, it's like so much cheaper to add storage today, right? There's still lots of potential to grow in terms of storage onboarding. And then we look at how are we remember the number just now we mentioned, right? Like we can aggregate up to 800 sectors per message. And then we want to look at what is this, how much are we really leveraging this aggregation as a network today, right? Like uh, from this chart, it's an average with a star because we, it, the ideal metric here could be medium, but we only get to like an average by after removing some of the outliers. Um, so uh, right now the level aggregation is between like uh, 15 to like 30, but like we can actually go up to 800. This it's a huge potential to grow. And similarly, there's another, um, because in terms of the block reward, um, uh, the, in terms of like how each storage provider earned their block reward, it's really based on the share of the quality adjusted power. Uh, another big lever here is Filecoin Plus. And earlier earlier this year, uh, just a couple of months ago, like um, during the Filecoin Plus governance call, the community has decided to increase, trying to increase the, the amount of Falcon Plus on Falcon network to like 500 petabyte. And that is another huge potential to grow. And as I mentioned earlier, because base, when there's, there's strong demand for using a network, which is good, but we also don't want it to be too expensive. That hurts the utility of the network. And with the hyperdrive upgrade, uh, with the base fee um, reduction, right? It's way cheaper to use the network. And we see actually much greater adoption. It's, it's also growing exponentially in terms of the number of active Falcon Plus deal, uh, the, the size of active uh, Falcon Plus deals on the network. Just to also recap a bit more about like the, the dynamic uh, in terms of um, the block rewards. Now that we are um, past the baseline, like baseline is actually another innovation that the crypto econ team has done, um, which is also, it's a basically a KPI driven minting mechanism. We're seeing that bit getting more and more adopted across the web three world. Um, now that we are above the baseline, basically what that means is that we have the network as a whole has achieved the KPI. So we follow this traditional Bitcoin style minting, which is like there's a fixed total pool. It means according to how much power, whether it's hash rate or storage that is on the network, each uh, storage providers are earning proportional to their share of the quality adjusted power. So what that means is if storage providers are adding more than the network average, they get ahead, the rewards increase, right? If they are just adding about the same as the network average, they, they just keep up the rewards stay the same. But if adding less than the network average, they fall back and reward decrease. So what that means is like storage providers should increase the QAP as much as possible. And they can do that through um, the two of the following ways, either through stealing more Falcon Plus deals that give them 10X in the quality adjusted power um, and or they can steal more uh, new committed capacity sectors. And just to remind, just to like go over that again, the two charts, aggregation is still somewhat underutilized, right? There's huge potential here, uh, massive gain um, to, uh, to go from like an average of 25 um, sector in an aggregation message to again get closer to 800. And the beauty of the balancer and discount is that even if you onboard, let's say 10X of the storage as it is today, Right, because of this balancing dynamic, the incentive is to aggregate, you might still observe the similar, a similar amount of base fee, which means that like the, the unit cost of adding a sector can, re, can remain relatively, relatively flat and predictable. Um, the second big opportunity and big potential here really is to onboard more Falcon Plus deals and make more Falcon Plus deals. And then um, and from 1.2 petabyte to like 500 petabyte, this is a massive increase. And just to review this like stages of, of the economy that we talked about uh, when we, uh, about a, a year ago when we first launched the network, right? I think we are way past um, stage one and all these blockchain networks and economy, they are evolutionary system, right? We're way past stage one. We build the capacity, uh, people optimizing the workflow, proof, secure proof. Uh, we demonstrate the storage is reliable. 
And then we are now kind of like in stage two where this like utility is growing very rapidly. The chain become more scalable with hyperdrive, um, reduced cost, and then like more efficient proof, right? Because of the smart aggregation, we people starting work on retrieval, making it more efficient. In terms of the minting, you have both the simple and the baseline minting working together, right? So this is where we are in the Bitcoin minting dynamic. And people starting to work on quality of service and trying to attract um, paying customers. So from my point of view, we talk about this in some other talks, right? Like um, uh, affordable storage at scale on Filecoin should be a given, but I don't think like for our community and ecosystem to succeed, it shouldn't be just about cost, right? It should be really about that experience. And I think Filecoin is really unique among all the layer one protocols because we, we bring in this entirely new building block, verifiable storage at scale with proof, right? Like there's bound to be something, some unique experience that we can create. Um, there are many talks on this and there are many, many teams working towards this uh, same mission. I feel very honored and very proud to be working uh, in the same direction with you guys. And uh, lastly, just to recap some of the key takeaway, it's really a record setting year for Filecoin, uh, even though it's just our first year and we are just really just getting started. It's the largest decentralized storage network with reasonable reliability guarantee, very strong macroeconomic statistics um, in terms of like protocol revenue and value, uh, value lock. It's also one of the fastest scalability upgrades that I've, I've seen um, in the past like five to six years in working in Web3. Right. And it's also done through underlying research and, and development, right? This is this is a big achievement that we should feel very proud to Falcon Orb is the right moment to celebrate. You'll hear all the people behind all this amazing upgrade talking about what they have done and what are, what are in stock in the future. And also huge increases in storage onboarding. And there's as we can see, as we saw from the chart earlier, this is just getting started. There is still like another big, big step, orders of magnitude increase ahead of us. And last but not least, we are in this cooperative and competition kind of uh, landscape of, of all the participants. We are all incentivized to outpace the network. And with that, happy one year of Filecoin and let's continue to make history. Thank you. Mm -hmm.